This piece of work looks at the rapid fall of John Gideon Okello from top position of Field Marshal of Zanzibar and Pemba in the Zanzibari government to almost oblivious status. Kindly subscribe, comment and give a like. That John Gideon Okello was the maestro, the chief mastermind of the revolution that overthrew the Sultani of Zanzibar is no doubt. Out of the three plans to overthrow the government of Zanzibar, only Okello's plan succeeded. It was the most secretly operated plan. On 10th December 1963, Zanzibar gained independence from Britain. The Sultan had no military force but a small paramilitary unit and police units. The nine-hour battle on January 12th, 1964, determined the fate of Zanzibar and resulted in the death of tens of thousands of Zanzibaris. The Sultan of Zanzibar, Jamsid bin Abdullah, left for exile to Britain and later to Oman. After the revolution, the man of the moment was none other than John Gideon Okello, a Ugandan who had emigrated to Zanzibar. Suddenly, the name Field Marshal John Okello kept popping up in local and international news agencies. Okello was the de facto head of Zanzibar. It was him who later determined the new government of the island in which Sheikh Abid Karume was picked as the president and Babu was the Minister for External Affairs. Okello was the commander of the army, made up of between 600 and 800 men. During his day, John Okello traveled widely across East Africa. The new government had been recognized by the governments of Kenya and Uganda. John Okello met and had discussions with President Julius Nyerere, Prime Minister, at that time Kenya was not yet a republic, uh, Jomo Kenyatta and Milton Obote, the Prime Minister of Uganda. He also met with Tanganyika Vice President Mfaume Kawawa. Later on, he met with Kenya's Minister for Information and Broadcasting, Mr. Cheng Oneko, Dr. Julius Kiano, the Minister for Education, and Kenya's Minister for Home Affairs, uh, Honorable Murumbi. In the beginning, things started looking bright for John Okello and the new regime. However, from February 1964, things started moving very fast on a downward trend. These are some of the reasons why Okello fell out with the Zanzibari leadership. There are those in the Zanzibari society who claim that Okello had no grounding in the Zanzibar society. He sprang up from nowhere. He spoke his Swahili with but the Kenyan accent. He picked up the Kenyan accent when he lived in Kenya in the 1950s. His accent also tended to be that of the Langi, a Luo group from northern Uganda, from where he came from. Another aspect touched on religion. Most of the people of Zanzibar were Muslims, while the name John Okello was clearly not indigenous. Some argued that the Arab rule which was unpopular in the islands, had been replaced by another non-indigenous person. There was also the case of increasing killings and rapes and looting in Zanzibar, which Okello did not seem to have control over. His ragtag army carried out looting and destruction against uh, the property of Arabs, Asians, Comorians, and even Africans with Arab blood. In his earlier radio interview, he kept on ranting against the communities. It was only after complaints that President Nyerere sent a force of 300 policemen to assist with managing the crisis. In fact, it is Okello who argued in another interview that he is the one who invited the Tanganyika police. Another issue to note is that Okello's revolution took place in a Cold War crisis pitting the communist countries against the western countries. Initially, after the revolution, there are rumors all over the world that Okello's takeover 
was that of a communist government having overthrown the Sultan of Zanzibar. The Cuban embassy had been established in Tanganyika one week before the revolution. It was claimed that John Okello was in fact a Kenyan, while in fact he was actually a Ugandan. It was claimed that Okello, a painter, had been trained in Cuba. This in fact was not true, as indicated by John Okello himself when he said that he only trained in the bush the night before the revolution. That more training took place on the use of guns when they seized the armories. There was also the issue of the mutiny of East African armies uh, from 20th to 25th January 1964. When the armies of East Africa went on rampage and insisted on the removal of British soldiers and also insisted that there should be a pay increase. It also happened that Okello was in Dar es Salaam to meet Nyerere, who unfortunately went into a safe house to avoid the mutineers. While in Dar es Salaam, awaiting a meeting with Dr. Julius Nyerere, John Okello said he joined the Tanganyika Minister for Defense, Oscar Kambona, to dissuade the mutinous soldiers under Sergeant Ilogi from mutinous causes. It was not clear whether Sergeant Ilogi, who was the mastermind of the mutiny, but who later called himself Kano Ilogi, when the British attacked the Kolito Army Barracks, was actually influenced by John Okello when he gave himself the title of Kano, all the way from Sergeant Ilogi. It also be noted that John Okello proceeded to expand the army, which he called Freedom Military Force, a paramilitary unit made up of his own supporters, which patrolled the streets looting property. The number of the army rose from between 600 to 800 to 1,200 men. This had not been approved by the cabinet, and it created consternation among the leaders. They saw him as a threat. During the month of February 1964, while on a tour in Uganda, Okello gave interviews to the effect that there were plans for more revolutions in Africa. President of Malawi, Kamuzu Banda, stated that his opponents were planning to use John Okello to overthrow his government. Again, Okello denied this. The final blow to John Okello came when Zanzibar and Tanganyika decided to form a merger, which would create the Republic of Tanzania, which would culminate on signing of an agreement on April 26, 1964. Later, Okello did indicate that he was not supportive of the merger. Finally, Okello's final nail on the coffin was when he traveled to Tanganyika during the month of March. He was denied re-entry and later he was deported to Kenya. From Kenya, he was sent back to Uganda. And uh, it so happens that uh, he was placed under surveillance during the rule of Dr. Milton Obote. This violence ended when Idi Amin came to power in 1971, and the two met in February in parliamentary buildings. He went on to recount how the Obote government and its general service unit had placed him under surveillance. He went on to express the fact that he was happy with a coup. However, sometime in 1971, during the month of July, John Okello is said to have been abducted by military men and was never seen again. This is the time when there was a systematic elimination of Obote loyalists from the army. This myster mysterious disappearance has never been resolved to date. The history of John Okello 
in the Zanzibar Revolution lasted from January 1964 to March 1964, a total of about three months. Kindly subscribe, comment, and give a like.